Welcome back to Set Streets and Eats, guys. I'm Chris Bauer. I am in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania today in front of a 90s era Taco Bell. Uh, you can definitely tell by the sign and kind of by the outside still, but the inside's definitely still 90s. Where do you see all the fuchsia purple and pink? Anywho, I've been wanting to do a history of Taco Bell episode, but I've been searching the US for an 80s, you know, one of the adobe roofed Taco Bells. Uh, those don't exist anymore, at least not in the Taco Bell version. You see those buildings all the time, but there's always something else, but they're not Taco Bells anymore. So I'm gonna settle for a 90s version because there's still a few of those around. And I found this one here in Pennsylvania. So we're gonna go in, get some tacos, and talk about the history of one of my favorite fast food franchises. And I hope you guys will join me. Let's go eat. while they're not gone yet, are kind of going the way of the Mansard Roof McDonald's. While I've seen a few of them still around, there's a couple in this area of Pennsylvania, but they're fewer and fewer and fewer. But these, you know, the, the I guess the, I don't even know what colors they are, the aqua and the purples and the pinks. And the, you remember the 90s ones. They're just getting fewer and fewer. <clears throat> and Taco Bell's been going, just like McDonald's, has been going to the gray box, Ikea version of their stores um, since 2016, actually. Uh, they've been going, uh, they've been remodeling all their stores and they're phasing these completely out. Uh, their older stores that I grew up having uh, with the, the old adobe roofs and the three windows in the front. Those are all gone. Um, we still have the buildings around. Everybody sees those buildings everywhere. But, uh, um, you know, they're repurposed and used for all sorts of different restaurants or businesses. Um, I pass them all the time in my travels, but those are still around, but they're not Taco Bells anymore. Um, if you guys know of any that are still Taco Bells, uh, they're in those old buildings. Let me know. I would definitely like to find a few of those that are still Taco Bells that uh, haven't been remodeled yet, that still at least have the 90s decor. But uh, when Glenn Bell started this, he actually started Taco Bell, at, not as Taco Bell, but as a drive-in. And he started just a few blocks away from the McDonald Brothers drive-in in San Bernardino, California. How unbelievable is that? Literally a mile away from each other. But right across the street from Glen Bell's drive-in was a little Mexican walk-up place that served tacos. And back then, of course, tortillas came as they always do, and the soft shells. <clears throat> and uh, of course, a soft shell tortilla falls apart. It's very hard to eat. The little place across from Glen Bell's drive-in was call called the Matilla Cafe. And part of their thing that they did that kind of invented 
was they would deep fry their taco shells into hard taco shells to make it easier for the tacos to be picked up to go, uh, to make it easier for it to be a to-go food for people to buy for lunch. But it became very pop popular, and Glenn Bell noticed this being right across the street at his drive-in. <clears throat> So like most good ideas in America, he just took that idea. Um, and he started doing that at his place. Um, of course, it was a big hit. And um, he started opening several Mexican food only drive-ins around Southern California under different name like um, Taco Tia and El Taco. And he tried those out during the 1950s. And until it wasn't until 1962 that he opened the first Taco Bell in Downey, California. Um, that was actually uh, still there. The original location was still there until 2015 when Taco Bell actually bought the building and they actually moved it to their world headquarters about 40 miles away in Irvine, uh, where it sits today. Once Glenn started the chain, they took off pretty quick. Um, he grew the chain throughout the 60s and 70s. He grew the chain throughout the 60s and 70s up to about 800 restaurants and then sold it in 1978 to Pepsi. And uh, they've owned it ever since. Attention Superman fans, Superman glasses are coming to Taco Bell. That's right, Taco Bell is offering Superman glasses. With exciting scenes from the movie, there's six of them. Every time you buy a medium-sized Pepsi Cola, you can buy a Superman glass. But supplies are limited, so uh, hurry down to your Taco Bell and, and start your own collection of Superman glasses. Superman glasses, now only a Taco Bell. Today it's owned by Yum Brands, which I believe is a subsidiary of Pepsi. <laughs> but they own KFC and and a whole bunch of other brands as well, which is why you saw, we see those restaurants doubled up with Pizza Hut, Long John Silver's, KFC, things like that. But they got so big in the early 90s because they had that, they would have become known as the cheap fast food place because they launched that 59 cent, 79 cent, and 99 cent menu. I drive right by those burger stands, headed for Taco Bell, man oh man, they got three great big menus. That was huge for Taco Bell back then. It was really big. Everybody in the 90s went to Taco Bell because of that. That was a huge draw. <clears throat> I remember when they had the Fiesta menu, which was new versions of everything for 39 cents each. Those were awesome. It's hard to believe this didn't exist until that little place across from Blim Bell's drive-in, a lot of it, of deep frying the shells. San Bernardino in the late 40s was literally a hotbed of fast food innovation. Who knew? Isn't that crazy? I mean, look what came out of that area. It's amazing. In and out started almost around the same time. That was like 20 miles away from there, too. Wow. Pretty incredible. But the logo, this 90s version of Taco Bell, is its longest lasting logo. The logo, this version of it, started in 1994, went to 2016 when they started doing these remodels. That's why these are, there's still a few of these around. Um, it's basically the Mansard roof version of the, the McDonald's, but this is their ta the Taco Bell version of that. That's why I wanted to come and do one when I finally saw one and do a, a history of 
because I won't find one of the old Taco Bells to do a history of, most likely. Um, but there's still a few of these left. I figured I might as well do it while I could still find them. Taco Bell's had six logos in its history. <clears throat> this is a uh, this restaurant and sign is its fifth incarnation of its logo. And uh, the one it currently has, which is the most minimalist version, is its sixth and you know latest incarnation that's been around since 2016. <clears throat> and if you watch Demolition Man, apparently Taco Bell won the franchise wars. So they're going to be around for a long time. hard to believe in the time that since Pepsi bought them in 1978 uh, they've grown them from almost I guess it was about 870 locations when they bought them from Glenn Bell Pepsi grew them into almost 9,000 locations worldwide in 32 different countries so Taco Bell is everywhere um, they're everywhere. They're in a lot of places. Uh, I don't know exactly where they rank by franchise or uh, by, I guess, uh, um, fast food franchise. Um, as far as obviously nowhere, no one's as big as McDonald's, but uh, um, I guess I'll have to look that up and see what the top 10 fast food franchises are. My guess is it would probably be I think Burger King would be number two, but I do kind of wonder. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But uh, while well, I'm back on the road, so hopefully you guys enjoyed a little history of Taco Bell. At least getting to see uh, one of the last few remaining 90s decorated Taco Bells. Taco Bell never had a whole lot to see in them. Um, sure, that was a 90s you know, color one. But they never had the play places or the the character or characters that um, you know uh, any of the other franchises had, especially like McDonald's. I think the closest thing they ever had to that was was the Chihuahua. Chances are, cause I wear a silly grin the moment you come into view. Chances are you think that I'm in love with you. Fall in love with a Mexican pizza all over again. Now, just 99 cents when you buy a large drink. That's over a buck off. Uh, from the 90s, the Yukero Taco Bell uh, uh, Chihuahua. Um, and he was just a commercial dog that just got huge. Um, I think that was the closest thing they ever had to having a mascot or a character. Um, and he was never really part of the restaurant decoration. Uh, so they did back in the, I want to say the 90s. And this, I think, was tied into the movie. But I believe they had the Bullwinkle movie because I think they had a hat, a Bullwinkle hat, because I'm almost positive I had one of those. And like a dork I wore it so pretty sure that happened I could be wrong pretty sure either way uh, they did have some successful movie campaigns I do remember their Batman movie campaign back in the late 80s uh, they had a, a Batman movie campaign that was pretty big I think it actually was really big it put them on the map um, so yeah I think that was a pretty big deal um, they said they've had a few uh, movie uh, and I know they had the, the Star Wars the prequel one um, cause I still have a lot of their, uh, kids meal toys and boxes from that campaign. 
So I do know that they're, they, they definitely had their run of those type of goings on. Uh, so Taco Bell was in the game for a while with that. I really don't know if they still have a kid's meal. I assume they do. I haven't heard much about it, you know, in recent times. But uh, um, I know that, that in the 90s, they were, they were in the game, so to speak, with the other ones. Uh, they definitely had a few big movie franchises that they had toys for. So, yeah. Taco Bell's been around. They, they've done a few things. Anywho. Hope you guys enjoyed some of that brief history of Taco Bell. I know I enjoyed sharing it with you. And I'll see you guys on down the road. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye now.